is. Uh, today, after again a long time, I'm be coming up with uh, a small video because uh, these days uh, uh, all the youngsters are all the college girls, especially are with the working with their projects and all. So maybe stacking up somewhere or the other, or what might you control to use it there into a problem. So today I'll be talking about Audino. And this, if I get a good views and good comments, I will continue with this. Generally, I'll try that in a month, I'll come up with one video. And uh, it'll be on training, how to use Audino and the different versions of Audino. So before coming to what a Audino is, we need to understand what a microcontroller is. Say like uh, this sort of simple chip, this sort of simple DIP IC is nothing but DIP stands for dual inline pack. There are two lines of pins and they are in line. You can see they are in line. So this I call as DIP package. This uh, training what I'm thinking is mainly for the youngsters, those who are not aware of what a Arduino is or have just started using it for them. Because uh, many students, they come to me from different colleges uh, for their project work. And I find them, say, like, uh, not uh, familiar with this sort of things. If they are really familiar with this sort of thing, they can do their project much better. So, to say about what a microcontroller. So, microcontroller is an electronic chip. It has different I.O. ports. It can be digital I.O. ports, digital I.O. ports, which can accept 0 or 1, or which can give out 0 and 1. And it has few analog ports also. What is the analog port? Which can take up, uh, give up any voltage between, say, like maybe 0 to 5 volt. So any voltage. It can be 4.3. It can be even sensitive 4.32 or maybe 2.17 or whatever it is. So that is analog port. It can receive analog uh, data. It can give out analog data. So let us see out. So microcontroller can do a simple job that is for an output to create an output. Any of the pin, any of the I.O. pin can give either high, that is 5 volt. Or it can create low that depends on how you code it out how you program it out so these are programmable chips over here you have to write a program and embed that is burn the program into the chip that is we call as embedding so this is a Arduino UNO one of the versions of Arduino it is using the same chip. It is using the same chip. It is the same chip you can see out over here. This is the same chip been used out. It is at mega 328p. So, so this is a UNO. And what is the benefit of this sort of boards? Today, this sort of boards are going very popular in the entire universe. The reason is. Uh, we don't need to every time uh, put it in the breadboard and use what a crystal I'll be using, what is the, say like capacitors with the crystal I'll be using, how to create a reset or which pin is to, which pin will be creating a reset and all. We don't need to bother. Everything has been defined out. You can just connect something, this sort of a USB cable. Uh, you can just connect up this sort of USB cable to it and connect it to your laptop and program it out. It can be also programmed using your maybe uh, mobile. Most of you are having a OTG with your mobile so it can be also programmed with a mobile too. Hmm? So a small microcontroller, a small microcontroller board which is really very useful. So sitting in the train you can develop your code. So that's the smartest uh, thing available in today's world. So, but remember one thing, 
Alone microcontroller cannot help out doing out anything. Reason? It requires various input and various output. And the various input and various output cannot be a tree or a pen or a water bottle or maybe some plastic or wood rubber or wood or whatever it is. It has to be electronics. The input has to be electronics, the output has to be electronics. So, working with the microcontroller, one has to be very knowledgeable as far as electronics is concerned. And uh, most of the people I find say like, uh, oh, electronics is, so oh, we do it out, no problem. We get this circuit over here and there, maybe in Google or say like any other place and we take it down and do the circuit. But if you really want to venture out this particular world, world of microcontroller, remember, understanding electronics is the first primary criteria and then go for the microcontrollers coding and mixing up this electronics with your microcontroller so that you can create a wonderful world of new venture. Hmm? Now, once you think of microcontroller, remember one thing that it is not that whatever has been said or someone has done it, I'll do that. I love, I'm, I being a developer, I love doing a device which has not been created. That is, I am a prototype developer. So like I try to design something new, uh, something creative. It can be for uh, maybe woman fighting, it can be for maybe for the blinds, it can be for anywhere, any place. So we need to create a subject which is renovative, innovative. Hmm? And uh, with the microcontroller you can also do the same thing, you can uh, okay blink one LED and all so on. We will be starting up that way itself to learn a subject. Obviously, we have to start up with those sort of uh, simple projects and then we can go for the competency. Uh, remember, uh, the best way to learn this microcontroller is to reach out to some guru where you can sit face to face and learn it out. Hmm? Uh, it can be me or there are plenty of people like me in this universe. Hmm? So, because YouTube and everything, YouTube and internet today have become, have become so powerful that uh, everything is visible out over there. Hmm? But the actual magics, the actual magics are never been told out or can never be told out. Rather, I can say in a different way also. Hmm? Because... Uh, in a video what happens out, I have thought out something and I'll be uh, saying out something and I'll be uh, finishing up my video. But what What about your questions? What about your questions? You, we have to be interactive. Hmm? And uh, designing, some, say like I'm talking about design and all. Say like once I talk about design, say like you may come up, okay, if I add this, what happens? If I don't add this, what happens? So I won't be, we won't be coming up with all those uh, pros and cons of uh, questions. Hmm? So learning from a uh, from a say like mentor is always I recommend it's always good. Hmm? Anyhow, so you can connect out this uh, UNO to your this uh, laptop and this UNO is ready will be ready and with this particular uh, Arduino they they have also created a ID a ID interface uh, through which you'll be coding out. So, we'll be seeing in the next uh, le lesson, say like uh, how to interface it with your computer and how to start working with it and how to embark programming and all. Today, we'll see the different versions of it. Hmm? So, this is the Arduino uh, UN. We'll see one more version of it. Uh, this is a Mega. Now, what is the difference between this and this? Both are almost the same chip. The same ID can program this and it can program this also. And uh, there are different versions. This is one more uh, same thing of the same company. These are all Arduinos, different versions of Arduino. This is UNO, this is Mega, this is uh, Mini. Oh, sorry, this is Mini. This is Mini. And this is Nano. 
So let me come up all together in one place. So this is the four. I have four versions with me and there are other I think uh, more than 17 versions uh, with this uh, audio today available in the market for different purposes now. Hmm? And uh, there are different uh, sensors and modules available with this. You can easily connect it out and you can work it out. But remember using those uh, Arduino sensors and modules, you cannot become a developer. Because you don't know how to develop that module. Maybe a light sensitive uh, sensor or maybe say like a fire sensor or maybe an ultrasound sensor. So if you don't know to make those, you will be only a user, normal user. So if I develop it in my own way and I say you okay use this library and do it out and the job is finished and the program codes are also there so the job is finished. So you have to just uh, download everything and compile it and put it and the thing starts working. But uh, developing is something different where you can use your imagination and create your world of something new. Hmm. So if you want to learn something from me, you can come down to my place also or say like you can see these YouTube videos and you can learn it out. But always I'll prefer learning to start learning from a mentor who is capable to teach you the basic concepts, the advanced concepts hmm? and uh, then ultimately say like you can proceed further for your own mental creations. Hmm? Now we have seen various versions of Arduino, so like probably I have four with me. Uh, what is the basic difference? The difference is now different microcontrollers and different uh, type of development boards have different things in nature. Now, for example, uh, in a microprocessor, it depends upon what is the speed. What is the speed at which this microcontroller works? That is one of the important tasks. Say for example, I want to create, make some light blink. Like for that, any even a smallest uh, microcontroller is good enough working with maybe one, uh, one megahertz crystal or maybe smaller than that is also good enough. Hmm? And uh, people may ask me, okay, so like why I use a microcontroller to blink? Uh, I can use a simple timer or maybe a two transistors to make it in a what do you call uh, pulsating in a say like. Uh, as I say, like uh, multiple uh, oscillation, uh, we can use it as an oscillator, we can use it and we can function, make it function. So like why we use a microcontroller? Now, using a microcontroller depends upon the requirement. Say for example, we are creating a washing machine. I'm writing a program or a code or I'm trying to use a microcontroller for a washing machine. Uh, to automize it all the whatever the say like manual things we do in normal uh, manual uh, washing machine we will try to automize first is we need a display so we'll try to attach a display with it maybe a graphical display or a two-line display it depends upon say like what is available with me and what I can use it hmm? it can be a small display big display and a graphical display whatever it is hmm? so first is the interface with the display then interface with the different uh, I use. Say like I want, uh, there should be a water level sensor. There should be something called a weight sensor, hmm? which can weight the uh, dry uh, cloth or something. Okay, so like not more than four kgs or not more than six kgs. It depends upon the capacity of the tank and all whatever we use it uh, in our like washing machine. And also say like uh, I want the, uh, Detergent must be automatically executed out. So there will be a detergent chamber in a month We'll purchase a detergent and put it into it. It can be a liquid. It can be a powder type whatever it may be And I want depending upon the weight the thing should go out the detergent should be placed out maybe uh, every kg maybe one spoon of powder detergent 
and say the cost of the water maybe for every kg maybe let us say 4 liter of water so for 8 kgs we require 6 liters of water so once 16 liters is full automatically it should stop out the water in inlet flow so this is where the job of microcontroller starts out that is whatever we are thinking manually will be trying to convert it to by writing codes we will try to make this chip intelligent and make our thoughts to work out. So for such concepts, we use this microcontrollers. So for example, uh, with a normal washing machine, maybe this sort of UNO may be sufficient. But I'm using a microcontroller and I'm using a sophisticated display which requires maybe uh, 20 IO ports. 20 IO ports. This particular UNO has maximum of 14 IO ports. Digital IO ports. And it has maybe uh, 6 uh, analog ports. So probably we cannot use this one. But yes, if we use a smaller display which has, which is a serial display, maybe using three four pins, okay, we can use it straight away with this. Hmm? So for such bigger concepts, we may require a uh, which which has a higher number of ports. So like this has approximately fifty four number of digital ports. This mega has fifty four number of digital ports and sixteen uh, analog ports. So obviously, it is much powerful than this. And maybe in some cases where even this I.O. ports fails out, maybe even uh, 60 I.O. ports including analog and digital I.O. ports are insufficient for some particular work. So we need a chip which is bigger than this. So similarly, and uh, obviously this and this are actually the same thing. These both are absolutely same, but this is a miniature version of the same thing. And uh, this is called as, uh, what do you call, uh, I generally forget the name uh, quite often. This is UN Omega and this is Nano, Nano, sorry, Nano. And this is also the same thing, same chip and this is Mini. So the sizes are different. We have to just shoulder the pins and make it work. So it has the same chip. The same chip over here is available in Mini is available in nano but in smd version the smallest version of it so all these three are almost same and the the major part of this uh, audino is that we can use a common developing platform for using up any of the hardware that is audino id through which we code out to this particular microcontrollers so this is uh, all about the microcontrollers. So every microcontroller has some digital IOs, has some analog IOs, uh, where every digital pin, every digital port can either be high, that is 5 volt, or it can be low, that is 0 volt. Hmm? Every analog port can have inputs, something like, 0 to 5 volt, anything in between, it can be 4.327 volt, it can be 2.12 volt, so that is analog, analog which has a wide range of inputs and a wide range of outputs, hmm? and a digital IO, it can have only two parameters, high or low, that is 5 volt or 0 volt, so a microcontroller is a simple device by which we can send, make a LED glow by uh, putting it high or make a LED go off by putting it low to it, to a IO port. And from next class, we will see how to code out or how, first of all, we will see how to interface it with the computer and secondly, we will see out how to start up the small codings so that we can play with it. Hmm. Uh, hope you enjoyed the class and uh, if I get good response to it surely I will continue with the classes hmm? 
And today is Holi, so a happy Holi to everyone. And any sort of development work uh, into electronics last 20, 30 years, three decades into it. So you can come out with your development work. It can be college projects, it can be engineering projects, it can be your PhD people, those who are doing doctorate and PhDs and all. I have almost touched every domain and even if I have not touched a domain, so no problem to me, say like, I'm open to every, every say like project. Hmm? And anyone wants to learn it, you can come down to me and learn it. It can be a online or it can be in-house course. I will always prefer an in-house because online again it becomes a bit tough. There are online students of mine, but uh, in-house I think I prefer it always better because face-to-face -face where I can sit and do plenty of uh, variations in front of you hmm? which is not possible sometime with a online courses hmm? so thank you thank you once again a happy holy to everyone thank you